Is it better to get a DEXA or a REMS? Today we'll be looking at DEXA and REMS, including what they show, how they're helpful for understanding bone health, and what their limitations are. Hello my friends, I'm Sarah, a nutritional health coach through the Institute for Integrative Nutrition and a BoneFit certified fitness instructor. I'm also a 500 hour trained yoga teacher with additional training that's specific to osteoporosis and yoga. I'm on a mission to reduce the number of osteoporotic fractures that happen each year. And I am glad to have you join me in the journey to better bone health. So let's talk about DEXA scans. DEXA scans are considered the gold standard for assessing bone health and measuring bone mineral density. There are real benefits that come from having a DEXA scan. There are also some real limitations. DEXA scans are generally considered to have an error margin of about 2%. That's pretty darn good. DEXA scans can be used to measure bone density for different parts of the body, but they're generally used to measure the spine, the hip, including the femoral neck, and sometimes the wrist. These areas of the body are the parts of the body that are most inclined to fracture. So that's what generally gets measured. DEXA scans only measure the hard outer layer of our bones. They're not able to measure the inside part of our bones or to determine our bone quality, which is a serious limitation. I think getting a DEXA scan is a great idea because for many people, they have no idea that they have bone loss and getting a DEXA can let them know that they have bone loss and that they need to start working on improving their bone health. Bone loss can be totally silent with a person having no idea until they have a fracture. Getting a DEXA lets a person know that they have bone loss hopefully well before they have any kind of a fracture, giving the person time to improve their bone health and hopefully to never have a fracture. That's worth a lot. Having more information about ourselves is a really good thing. There are some things that affect the accuracy of DEXA scans. DEXA scans are most effective for a person with average body weight. If a person is either overweight or underweight, then DEXA might not be as accurate. Also, how hydrated a person is can affect the DEXA results. If you're going for a DEXA scan, you want to be hydrated, but don't drink a lot right before your test. Instead, have a tall drink of water about an hour before your exam. During a DEXA scan, if a person moves, that can also blur the images and create a not quite as accurate result. Operator errors are always possible and machine calibrations can also be a bit off. It's also helpful to have repeat DEXA scans performed at the same location that you previously had one done because they're often calibrated the same. It's also a bonus if you can get the same technician to do your test because it's also similar to what you had done before, creating a better comparison to a previous DEXA scan. Also be aware that if you have significant scoliosis, DEXA may not be able to get an accurate reading on your spine at all. So once you've had a DEXA scan, you may be wondering what your results mean. Scans usually provide two different scores, a T-score and a Z-score. The Z-score is less useful in my opinion because it compares your bones to other people who are approximately the same age and weight as you are currently. Since a person reaches their peak bone mass at about age 30, What's more useful is comparing bone density to peak bone mass, because this gives quite a bit of insight into how much bone a person actually has and how much they've lost. The comparison to peak bone mass is given what's called a T-score. There are ranges for normal osteopenia and osteoporosis. Normal bone density is considered to be between one and negative one on the bell-shaped curve. The range between negative one and negative 2.4 is considered to be the osteopenia range. Once a score hits a negative 2.5, this is considered to be where osteoporosis starts. Osteoporosis continues on down the scale indefinitely from there. The lower a score is, the more likely that a fracture could potentially happen. 
If you know that you need to work on improving bone health, you are way ahead of not having any idea that you need to do something. And that's the power of having a DEXA scan. Things that you should work on improving if you know that you have bone loss are doing some sort of regular, consistent, weight-bearing exercise. Any good exercise regimen for improving bone health also includes regular balance practice. In my bone fit training, it was drilled into me over and over again that everyone should practice balance for at least 20 minutes every day. This doesn't mean that you should stand on one foot for 20 minutes every day. Every time that you walk somewhere, it actually counts towards your balance practice. Doing a set of heel drops is part of a balance practice, and so is walking in different ways, like going forwards and backwards, shuffling from side to side. Standing on one leg is also a really great balance practice if that's accessible in your body. Making sure that you're getting all of the nutrients for your body is also incredibly important for improving bone health. So from here, let's go over what a REMS test is, what it offers, and how it helps to better understand bone health. First off, REMS stands for Radio Frequency Echographic Multispectrometry. Basically, it's a test that uses ultrasound technology to provide information about your bones. It's non-invasive and doesn't expose you to any radiation, which is awesome. There's another real benefit to REMS, and that's that it gives you some information about the quality of your bones. DEXA, remember, only measures the outer layer, but a REMS uses ultrasound waves to look through the bones and to analyze different layers of bone tissue. It provides a more thorough look at bone density and bone quality by examining the inner structure of our bones. REMS helps to glean information about a bone's microarchitecture and a bone's strength. This information can then be used to assess fracture risk. After having a REMS test, results are available right away to discuss with your medical provider, which is also another plus. Another benefit for REMS is that if you happen to have a significant scoliosis curve, it may have been difficult to get an accurate DEXA reading but REMS provides another way to have a look. A REMS test lasts for only about 15 minutes. To prepare for a REMS test, it's important to wear comfortable clothing that will provide easy access to both your low back, your thigh, and your hip. Sweats seem like a good choice here in my opinion. They're comfortable and easy to adjust. Don't wear creams or lotion that could potentially interfere with the ultrasound equipment on the day of a REMS test. And you don't have to worry about fasting or being particularly hydrated for this one. It's important to let the technician know if you have any medical implants. REMS is not affected like an MRI or an x-ray would be with metal hardware that's medically inserted, but it's still helpful for the technician to know about the placement of any medical devices. You also don't need to stop taking medications or supplements ahead of a REMS test. In addition to providing all the information covered on a DEXA, REM test results give you a fracture risk of low, moderate, or high that's based on your bone density and your bone microstructure or the quality of your bones. Having repeated REMS tests over time will give you a gauge on whether your bones are holding steady or becoming weaker or becoming stronger. This is incredibly helpful when you're using diet and exercise to improve your bone health. Since REMS tests are newer, they're not available everywhere yet, but there have been a number of traveling REMS tests that have been making their way across the United States. I have a number of clients who've actually been able to get a REMS test when it arrived in their particular area. So if you search on the internet for REMS Ecolite and look for locations, you'll be able to see if there will be a REMS test available in your area now or if there will be one in the near future. I hope that this information about DEXA and REMS tests are helpful and that you're able to get tests and information that give you insight into your bone health. And if you found this information helpful, please share it with someone that you know and love. And I look forward to talking with you soon.